Well, we've just about recovered from Tuesday night. It's going to be that sort of running. Things are definitely looking up. The big man is scoring goals for fun. And I'm talking about Banteke, not Kane. We'll get on to him in a moment. There are six games left for Villa to get the points required to stay in the Premier League. Excitement, drama, tension, twists and turns are all likely in the coming weeks and we'll be bringing you every moment if you can bear it. Hurricane, Citizen Kane, whatever you want to call him, it's impossible to ignore Spurs hotshot Harry Froggy. No, he's been brilliant. He really has, Jack. He's been sensational this year. And I know in this country we, we big up young English players and, and they end up fizzling out and do nothing. But this won't happen with this boy because he's got a bit of everything. Aside of the goals, which are his goal scoring record has been very special since he started really coming to the fore in, in, in November. But it's the way he brings other players in. He makes goals for the pit. His first touch for, for a, a young lad is brilliant. He, he reminds me a lot in that way of Teddy Sheringham, the way he linked in, particularly that mm. partnership he had with, with uh, Alan Shearer. He linked in and made him lots of goals. He, he does this as well. So he brings other players into the game, the midfielders. They get encouraged. They make runs into the box because they know when they're playing to him, it sticks. He doesn't give it away. And he's just been, I mean, he's just been breathtaking. His yeah. goal scoring record's phenomenal. Well, it's staggering, isn't it? Considering he wasn't starting games in the Premier League in the early part of the campaign. He's got 19 in the top flight and he might just win the, the Golden Boot. Well, the, the funny thing was, it was, it was when Tim Sherwood had left Spurs, I remember seeing a game where Tim was actually being a co-commentator in the game, and he, he pleaded with Maurizio to start playing him. Right. Two weeks later, he did. Hasn't looked back. Yeah, and now he's out to stop him from scoring. Well, absolutely. That, that's well, going to be the challenge, but let's hope yeah. he's used all his, his goals up. But Ericsson's the, the other guy who you think is a threat as, as main creator, and he scores goals himself, the midfielder. Yeah, well, those two, are, I think, are the tormentors in chief for most teams, particularly at White Hart Lane. You know, they've, they've scored 51 goals at White Hart Lane this season, highest of anybody. So we know they're well capable of scoring goals. They also score lots of late goals, as we found to our cost early in the season. Mm. And Ericsson is the one person who's done it time and time again. He's popped up at that many games this season with a last-minute goal from the edge of the penalty area. Something we really have to be aware of, Jack, because yeah. he's done it too often. And we are known, during the course of the season, we've conceded a lot of goals in the last 10 minutes of the game, so we have to be really careful. But this is a game that I think we can get something from. We both aged about 10 years, didn't we, on Tuesday night? <laughs> you didn't have any grey hairs before the game. That was just incredible, wasn't it? And what a vital goal from, from Christian, yeah. that, that third to complete a, a superb hat-trick. And, and that might be the difference now. I really enjoyed the game. Mm. I thought Enjoyed game, or endured? Endured, uh, enjoyed both <laughs> together, mixed them together. Yeah. But it was a cracking game of football. And we haven't... We haven't seen that many at Villa Park this season. Mm. Now, the result it was not the one we wanted. I thought we dominated them. I thought the first half was as good a first half as I've seen from us this season. I thought we were excellent. I thought the midfield completely dominated theirs. We were all over them. We needed the extra goal before half-time. I think had we gone that, if we'd have scored that goal, if Jack had put that chance away, yeah. perhaps, I think we'd have been out of sight in the second half. But I just think our, that our lack of confidence, our frailty, it came to haunt us in the second half. Mm. And, and it, we've come off in the end a, a game where I guess all the fans are, are maybe relieved that after Christian's goal, we've got a point. We should be disappointed because mm. we were by far the better team. We should have had uh, the three points. We've got the FA Cup semi-final, then we've got another tough journey to Man City. They've not been great, but you can't rule them out. You know, they're, they're, they're a top team. You know, they are the champions of the Premier League. So... Another tough game. But then we've got, West, we've got teams like West Ham at home who, who are, you know, I think we can, I genuinely believe we can be. Yeah, Everton as well, yeah. before a trip to, to Southampton. So there are yeah. opportunities there. Yeah, there are. But the, I th even I think from the next two games, we still need some points. I think we were all a little bit taken aback by everybody winning at the bottom mm. of the table. Yeah. I think that's really sort of put the jitters about everybody. So in the next two games, away at Spurs and Man City, we need some sort of a point tally. And a big sporting weekend, the Grand National. You're watching the Masters as well? Absolutely, yeah. yeah can't yeah. wait for that. The main thing, though, is Spurs and Villa, of course, from our point of view. Much more analysis over on ABTV. Ken McNaught, once again, alongside me for commentary on Saturday afternoon. White Hart pain or White Hart game? We'll soon find out. <laughs>